Hello there, this is the first of the build series of the Print Shift version 4. Previous video, went through the parts kit, the tools required, T10 Torx, 1.5, 2 and 2.5 millimeter Allen skis, hex keys. I really like my parallel draw pliers, but some regular uh, needle nose pliers will work. I always have some tweezers around, not strictly necessary, but big hands, and Phillips screwdriver. Put together a print shift 4.0 kit, just to keep things organized. Organized by the stuff that you're doing, not by anything else really. So I'm going to set you guys up, keep an eye on Mini, real quick we named this one Ivy, because it's print shift 4. Is that corny enough? Not corny enough? I'm debating myself, to be honest. Alright, so the first step with the print shift is build your Prusa Mini and print your print shift parts. I did that all off camera. You want to build your Mini, run your print on it first to make sure that when you're debugging later, you don't have to worry about simple problems. Take care. Build you know. What we're going to do today is build conveyor belt, or rather, build the part ejector onto the bed. First up with that, T10 Torx, remove all the existing bed screws. You could retain these, it's just they're so small, and I really don't like having the T10 Torx around. So I'm going to replace them with a regular hex key, uh, 10 millimeter long screw, as we lift the bed up to make room for the print shift parts. In order to make room for the print shift um, idler, we need to make this part a little bit smaller. That's a good time to do it. So if we look at this part, you can see we shaved off just to about uh, two millimeters. It's not a huge change, and you could just cut this guy if you want, but definitely can't cut it while it's installed, so if you're gonna install it, might as well do it right. Make sure you're not pinching the wires. This is your thermistor. Pretty important. You can set the bed aside for now. Using parallel draw pliers or a uh, regular needle nose. We are replacing all of these standoffs. These are six millimeter standoffs with 10 millimeter standoffs. If you hold the screws in place, you can replace them one at a time. All you really got to get them is finger tight. We can always come back and tighten them up later. We're actually removing the center row completely because if you put a standoff here, the conveyor belt would run right into it. So. We are just removing those parts entirely. First insert the tweezers. That is all the standoffs. I'm actually going to redo this one because this part has this extra lip down here. Give it some more strength. So 
you actually do need to tighten that on after the fact. But let's first install the motor. The motor gets mounted right in here. You can do this out of order, but. Just getting that in there loose so we can still pick it good. Putting this on upside down, we have just enough shaft to do it. That way you get the belt path close to the shaft and puts a lot less stress on the motor itself. I just want to show this part where with a 16 tooth pulley you have just enough room to tighten these screws because we're going to use that to tension the belt connected to the other pulley. So I'm going to install this guy. path for the screw to go in. And if I do it while holding the camera, it's just going to fall right out. That is the motor mounting. The other side of the roller just plops right on. You don't need him to be held in too precisely. We have a bearing on each side. So the bearings are going up top. And I already glued the rubber onto this shaft. This is EPDM foam rubber. Should just be snug over the shaft. You want this guy inserted there, through the bearing there. That is our drive system, along with a 110 millimeter. 55 tooth belt. You see the belt is nice and loose. We can still turn this shaft pretty tight. I push the motor down. Should tighten right up. And that is the drive roller assembly. Next up is the idler assembly. That's all they were going to do for the video today is these two. This is the rod holder. It's airing in each. You'll notice these are not symmetrical. They are mirror images of each other. I guess that is symmetry. But each goes into the idler mount, which is going to clip right onto the back there. This guy goes on the front here. In order to do the pushing, we just have an M5 screw. Nut drops in, screw drops in. Our tensioner pops in. So as I turn the screw, it forces this out of the channel. And there's a hexagonal slot on these to guide them using the hex of the uh, Prusa Mini. Second shaft, they're both 200 millimeter long M8 hardened steel shafts. I just love the amount of clearance we get. That's the tightest point. We can only tension the rear about four millimeters before we run out of room, before we start running into things. And we clear the LCD screen by just about the same amount. All right. So that is the drive roller and the idler. I'm gonna throw the belt on there just to show what it looks like. So normally how I do the belt install is I'll have the heated bed up on top and I'll just feed the bed through from one side or the other. So 
it was a bit of a fiddle to get it to miss all the things that are underneath. Just so all the components of the conveyor belt. So these steps are not necessary. I just want to show how it works early on. All right, so just to demonstrate the concept, I have two live wires. Throw some tension on there. Send it the opposite direction. Works pretty well. I'm really very pleased with the simplicity of it. How much parts we got rid of. Alright, final step in this video is to button the machine back up. I think I'm actually going to put the belt on as well because it just, well, it's here now. But before putting the belt on properly, you need to put on your heat bed. So we're going to line all that up and using M3 by 10 millimeter flat head screws. Okay, with three screws around the top and three screws on the bottom. The middle screws, they're gone forever. They won't be missed. This is using a two millimeter X driver. of the ball end is that you can screw things in at an angle so you can reach you reach the tensioner here like this without too much trouble it is a little bit tight it's a little bit inconvenient but you got a part ejector on your Prusa Mini brand new roll of tape so this is how I normally install the tape for the bed basically just what I found the easiest You'll notice I'm doing this directly on the heated bed. I've never been able to do it good enough that I didn't have room to fit the uh, stainless steel build service on. Now, if you cut this here with your knife, you're cutting through traces on the uh, heated bed. Never, never do that. Being very careful to avoid damaging your Prusa Mini. It's a good printer. So I tipped the bottom of the belt and the top of the belt. Don't curse yourself by using dull tools. You'll notice I was trying to make her tight. Keep that steel sheet in there. Don't keep that in there. Get in there. You can see the tension come into it. That looks good. So that's all we're doing for today. That is about a half hour, including some screwing around, some setting up, and some random just chit chat. I'm happy with that. So next time we're going to do the wiring. Get all ready. After the next video, this will be wired up with a micro switch, and it will be ready to print continuously from a USB stick. We'll throw some more videos on later in terms of adding a Raspberry Pi and configuring the same. But thanks for watching. Happy printing.